ready. All right. We're going to call uh, order to the November 7th design council meeting this morning. The first item on our agenda this morning is the approval of the minutes from our September 12th meeting. Ready, we'll accept a motion to approve those minutes. Unless anybody has any questions. here. Probably should approve. All right. Motion from Susan to approve the minutes. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion on that motion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That is unanimous. Uh, so, Lindsay, I'm going to turn over number two, which is a little later um, rehash on the Chris Church's award. So, uh, I believe last meeting we did e vote um, after the last meeting to make sure all council members had a chance to vote. The catalog project was. Um, the pretty very clear winner of those. Uh, last week we held the Art Awards at Arts Council on Thursday night, um, and our accepted the award on behalf of the city. Um, but I think the Arts Council did a great job of kind of capturing the project, so we definitely wanted to share that with the group. So we'll share the video that was presented at the award ceremony itself.
that was uh, presented at the Art Awards last week. And maybe just as an FYI, um, Becky Tuttle, our vice mayor, was the MC at the event, and she spoke very highly of this project being in her district, as well as uh, John D'Angelo, my predecessor, and then uh, Patricia McDonald, who was on the design council at the time. Both of them also accepted awards at the event for something else, uh, but spoke very highly of this project that it brings to the community. Great choice of design council for the project. Thank you. Nice job. It's the only thing that was left in the video that I did that all this for newer members, this church is used to all up at the design council here. We go, I want you to wow me. I want to see a wow factor in every design that happens in the city of Wichita. So that's what I had said in there. You know, here's churches always wanted the wow factor as they were editing that part. That, that was his cliche that he would always tell us, which I thought was appropriate since it's the awards named after him. So moving on to item three, we have the Murdoch Park Trail proposal. We have Anthony Joyner here today. Um, yeah, I'm have you. you don't have to stand at the podium, you're welcome to do, or you can anywhere along the front there, here it comes. There too. I've only been up here once, all this always. Um, okay, there we go. All right, I'll see what So, uh, my name is Anthony Joyner. I am the uh, founder and director of Mulberry Arts, and one of our programs is a program called Meet the Child. It's a youth mentor program where we teach young artists um, both public art, uh, gallery art, and entrepreneurship within the arts. Um, Murdoch Park is an important space in the uh, community. You know, I'm not going to read this word by word. You all can see this. Um, I'm just going to kind of give you all a brief rundown. Um, we were having conversations with the kids in the community, uh, the kids that are in our program, and we wanted to see what we could do to help teach them that their art can actually make a difference more than just uh, showing it to their family and their friends, more than just making a couple dollars from their art, but how can their art make a difference in the community? And uh, someone came and, and brought part to us it's over, gave a full walkthrough, and then asked them at the end, what do you think about this park? And they told us a lot. Like, they don't feel safe in the park. So many other things that um, they were like, I really wish I could do something about this. And so that's when we began tossing to them the idea of what their art can do. And so um, they came up with the idea to do a mural and then they had a lot of complaints about a couple of other things and we said we'll take it in phases and the mural is what we'll, we're starting with today um one of the first areas that they began to look at was the bathroom and how coming in and around the bathroom there was kind of a lot going on i saw some paraphernalia and different things and so we had a couple of conversations with um our therapists and several others involved in public art in regards to with art to actually liven up a space and to make it more visible and to make it more safe. And um, let's see, these are the people that we had involved. The kids are at the uh, Monica and Misery, and they're both uh, freshmen in high school. And then their mentors, Dominique and Sydney. Um, they sat down with them and, and talked to them about the different types of art that they wanted to present here. We tried to do a video with them, but there was a family emergency that kept us from doing that. But they really wanted to see something bright and vibrant, something that spoke to uh, the youth in that community. And they came up, I had them to come up with three different things. And that's what we'll go through here really quickly. Um, as you can see, they love like flowers and, and different things like that, but something that really stood out um, as we began to talk was that they wanted to send a message. Um, sexual assault is something that's like a really hard, really big, really hot topic um, throughout the world, especially throughout our nation, as they see. And a lot of these kids and a lot of the kids that they know have gone through something. 
and they began having a conversation with uh, with Sydney about Medusa and how they really saw Medusa. A lot of people look at Medusa as the Gorgon monster, and these kids literally um, monocle and like if you really look, she's a victim. She's a sexual assault victim, and she was punished for being a sexual assault victim. And so that was something that um, she thought about maybe placing in that park, but not placing it in there in a way to where she's a scary monster, but how can we put like rainbows, stars and things in there to kind of help identify. And then she kept going with the flowers. This was another iteration of kind of what that looks like. Um, having a woman on the back wall saying you are enough um, and then kind of the, the hands holding the heart and and move toward the final design this is what they really kind of landed at at the end they wanted it to be more and more cutesy as things went along I thought it was really funny but we kept having conversations with the art therapist in regards to what helps to make an area safe? And one of the things that she brought up was that you need eyes. When people feel like there are eyes somewhere, they're less likely to do something that um, that they wouldn't want seen in the public, right? And so there's a particular area, as you can see down at the bottom here, there's like a jacket left here, and there was a bag there as well that has some drug paraphernalia. And so that's where the kids wanted to place the eyes somewhere where there's something going on, where when they place that, people will be less likely to do the things that they shouldn't be doing in that particular area. And then going around the rest of the park, uh, not the park, but uh, the rest of the uh, bathroom place, like flowers and butterflies and things like that. So on each wall, on each of these four walls, you'll see something that's uh, cohesive with Kind of what we see here um, sunflowers to represent uh, kansas and then just flowers and butterflies and then also medusa there to kind of represent what the kids want to <clears throat> and what you have on the screen is the final find that you like yes so a couple of questions right you and lindsay back this is a Project that your organization is volunteering, sponsored by a certain department. So it's a, oh, go ahead. I believe it's in partnership with the Parks and Rec Department. And Troy is available for questions, perhaps, in regards to partnership. Definitely um, challenges spearheading the project to support the project. Okay. And Troy, is that gone to the park board yet, or is that after? Nine council makes it. We're having director of parks and recreation. So this item that we have not taken it to the park board, believe in planning on the park board. Uh, our donation to this is paying, paying for the materials, obviously providing location for it as well. So we were really excited to find folks that wanted to uh, bring some really interesting, fun art to this park. And it really, really fits in with our overall scheme of adding more art to our parks. Uh, we're bringing in benches that have really interesting art in it. We obviously have the keepers. Uh, we've had some other murals. The gentleman in this room actually has some murals in some of our parks. and. Just want to continue doing this and bringing in more and more art into our parks. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Design Council? Mm -hmm. um, quick, this doesn't seem relevant, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Are those bathrooms open? They are open in the summertime, but currently, right now, we just winterize them. So they're currently okay, open. so the park department is open because I also hate it when we all start fall apart too. Plus the inside of the bathrooms are <clears throat> we've had it's just about that. And if, if I could state as well, as we go through this program for anything that we do present with Meet the Challenge, we want to take these kids through the full process. 
So there will be kind of a mix and things like that that they'll be submitting. We're working with the partner on that, that submit as well. The daily maintenance of the of the restrooms is actually the contractor. We have a contractor that goes to all of our parks and cleans all of our restrooms on a daily basis in the summertime. The idea behind this, though, is to put in more pride into our parks to really kind of reduce the amount of vandalism that we're having in our restrooms. Um, so more often that we have people that are there that are appreciating the park, that appreciate uh, all the assets in the park, the less vandalism that we have. So that's kind of the idea behind this as well. So it's not just the art, but we want to have more activity going on in the parks. And when that happens, there's less than that. That's your question. Yeah, basically, because okay. I just, you know, why have the bathrooms if they're never usable? Um, and the art will add to them, but it's not imposed anything. It's stuck. We just feel like we have some assets and we don't. Uh, You're absolutely I can, right. And that, I can drop down and show them to you. Oh, I know. Believe me, I know. Like, why, you know, all this, well, anyway, but. Well, like I mentioned, the idea is to put in more interest into our assets. If I can get more resources to keep them uh, well maintained. Okay. Because if we just leave them in disrepair, then it's like the, bro the broken window syndrome. I wouldn't go in. Well, they're definitely necessary. Uh, they are used. Okay. I get I get calls all the time as to why certain restrooms are closed, and so our efforts are to try to maintain them as best we can. Okay. You said I'm not anything. One, you know, sometimes design comes through. That's what you're, what you're putting it on. You know, it's the restroom. I made from an art maintenance standpoint. So uh, with the approval of designs to date, we would then work with uh, the challenge on uh, accessioning these in and which would then go into our program. So the murals themselves would be overseen by our uh, really Jana's provision to make sure that they're maintained. With that, we always want to make sure we have like a lifespan for, uh, in the thought, knowing that this is on a usable space in a high traffic potentially area, its lifespan might not be 20 years. We know that on the front end, accessioning the project. So we don't maintain the bathrooms and the calendar. So, what are the potential of tags? So, usually, um, there's been, we've actually done a couple, of, I'm sure really speaks to this, but um, there's just kind of two different ways that people normally go about covering tags or uh, adding kind of tag <laughs> prevention. One of those ways is that if someone tags it, let's go clean it up. And usually when that happens, that's when you see more tags happening. Um, however, even though uh, street art community is sometimes seen a kind of uh, it's hostile light, usually when an artist has placed work, they're way more hesitant. It's not 100% unlikely, but they're far more hesitant for their artists work with the tag. And so that's kind of the idea behind having these young artists do public art to. We have ways to, I consider art, the 11th Street Branch in Riverside, and it gets tagged constantly. And then the city comes in and uses up any old paint they have in their bucket. And you know, over the tags, so you've got this nice uh, bridge, you know, that was went before all the art once upon a time and tagged constantly. And like I said, nobody then goes in or cleans it off, you just paint over it with brown paint. And that That's is why I worry about stuff like this because I consider that bridge. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I definitely understand that. And like I said, this won't be 100% guaranteed that no other artists will come and attempt to tag this. However, this being kids that are actually from the community, um, that's one of the things that we were very intentional about as well. We have this, these kids actually live within a few minutes of that park. Um, so they're known in the community and people will get to see them actually out there. 
and putting it we feel that that will be sort of a deterrent to keep people from going and vandalizing. Other comments or questions? Yeah, I would just say, uh, I, just, I just say, I find the building kind of interesting the building, architecturally being architect, but it is kind of a cold building uh, for the community. And so adding the color or the, you can help the park, but that's valuable. Uh, my only question would be if there if there's any lighting we're near this or is it night is this going to be somewhat illuminated or uh, yeah and unfortunately not really okay. dark yeah that's something that we yeah. looked at as well um especially with those uh awnings kind of sitting over on the sides it is something that we thought about but that's yet another reason that we're bringing in such bright colors um with it, such vibrancy so I'd love to see it illuminated with that final I just want to clarify that since there's kind of one in design two, design two is here, one is to look at, right? Uh, right here. This one is okay. So is that design two on what you all have? Because it's design three. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Okay. So that's the one. The one with the more plus tail colors. Yes. Okay. So are they choosing between? Four walls, right? No, we're not choosing. They're not selecting how many balls. He's showing us that I'm looking at the. Thought we were choosing. Right. Um. On all four walls. Yes, there will be artwork on all four walls. The other uh, two walls, which. Fortunately, they um, have put together just yet, but they will be cohesive with the two designs that you see. Uh, just in terms of design, the background, is that supposed to be rock concrete or I guess the background color, do you know? Uh, no, that is gonna be a color. It's, that's gonna be that kind of gray color. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, but from that, if that's the case, that my, only suggestion just from the design that because there are more pastel colors, uh, there'll be a tendency sun to the colors fade eventually without. out. Um, I might encourage you guys to saturate some more saturated colors so that eventually they don't kind of get lost in the background. Okay. Just to kind of work on the contrast. Okay. Yeah. The color will fit out and it might just kind of. Especially, I know this location and there's the highways right there and there's um, Murdoch. So a lot of people are going to see them in a vehicle, right? You yes. might miss it. The colors are too, the hues are too similar to the background. Right? So this is where high contrast uh, might be beneficial to your design. Uh, just something to keep in mind. Uh, it's given from here, right? And I know that. The screen is different than the what we have printed. But even from here, it already is a little bit of starting to. Yeah, I can see, especially with the together. butterfly and. Yeah. yeah. It's just a, a comment on, on the colors. And what paint do you guys are using? Um, we're working with a couple of professional artists on that. They uh, talk about um, is it Golden Montana is yeah. one that they uh, talked about. So, I have some recommendations for outdoor paint besides the minted. I encourage you to stay away from house paint because that will burn and it will fade much faster. Right. There's a couple products that are the same. Price and quality um, that are much better, and they're really highly pigmented, even better than Montana. Yeah. Um, so I can check that information as well. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll uh, definitely reach out to you and have a conversation with you about that too. No, you got it. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. And that's one of the first things that came up because, again, when starting this project, we wanted to consult as much as possible rather than just dive into it. 
And so uh, we brought in a, a couple of our local artists to kind of come do some workshops with the kids, yeah. and they're going to be the ones to help. Was Camilla involved in this? Uh, no, unfortunately not, not yet. Okay. She may be involved later. I'm supposed to have a conversation with her today, but she hasn't been involved in it so far. Jesse? Um, at first, I thought we were picking, so I was really excited. I was immediately drawn to the bright, like rectangle. Um, but now that we have our choices, I like the girls' choices, but I would maybe encourage them to use some of the brighter backgrounds so it really pops out and seems really happy. Just because I feel like the gray kind of takes away from their design. It kind of looks like you just painted something as is on there. Like maybe you don't notice it, but I, these ones really just seem happy and like a real art piece. And I don't want their design to get lost in like the gray, kind of like you just drew something on the middle of a piece of paper and didn't paint the rest of it. So they are. And I like the girls, you know, do their own designs. I love that. But I think that like having a brighter background like these would really enhance what they've done and make it look like a real finished piece. I appreciate it. Yeah. Anybody else? There's just one restroom, right? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. So there's no more comments. And, uh, somebody needs a wordsmith emotion. I think that's my job. <laughs> <laughs> I'll move to approve the presented uh, the comment that the paint is right. That uh, that's there. And the ability to adjust the color. That's correct. All right. Motion from Matt Ham. Second. The other Matt. All right. So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's says unanimous. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you all. Item number four on our agenda today is an update on the uh, Vanessa Bridge from the investment that we had. Yeah, so concerns have been raised um, uh, by the community and, of course, within our culture regarding um, the status of the bridge. And we had our conservator, Deborah Rodriguez of Past Matters, do a detailed assessment and recommendation report for us, which was included in the motion. Um, the, her recommendations, her, uh, what she noted, its condition, and also her uh, mimic the restoration that was done in 2000. Um, it involves, of course, the, uh, where we where there's biological growth and other um, goes to some of the repeat. Um, so we are uh, in conversation with a U.S. Heritage School in Chicago to provide us with analysis and formulas that they could possibly um, bring their assessment in this bridge use in future restoration, which hopefully help and repair, but we're going to hold off for at least a year, if not longer. Or we need a year to come up with a plan. Well, we need to come up with a plan. This is a it's a complex restoration. Um, and so the development of that plan, everything in place, if any of that carthite, uh, cartholite. Um, restoration needs to be done, which there is uh, one of the 
one of the figure is missing uh, part of its nose. Um, and that the colors in that car the light created through the glass. Brown glass. Um, and during the 2008 residency, they actually reached out to the community to find that antique glass. We may have to do uh, the same. So it is it is a rather complex process. So we will be uh, developing the plan and see what we intend to do how to report the for next. Questions for Jana? Susan. I always have the same one. Who maintains the bridge? Who maintains it? Yeah. Public Works. City, oh. Wich City of Wichita Public Works. Okay, so that explains some of the maintenance. If I can, this is pretty that's presented itself even just in my tenure, uh, but it's something that I think if I could carry on it, it was where we saw a little bit of a service hole uh, in the, what the city provides. Uh, we definitely identify it as a piece of public art, the entire bridge in, in whole, uh, but we also have historical re restoration as part of planning and zoning and then public works as well because it's on the river we've got uh, the army corps of engineers involved in some of the that aspect getting parks involved and some of the cleaning around it so there's a lot of departments that touch it um, who's actually responsible at, at a very top level that was a little unclear on, on my efforts in trying to figure that out so definitely for improvement on behalf of the city uh, in maintenance to the same city yeah, because there's um weeds growing around there. That's what I'm like, oh we supposed to get those out of there. So it's curious because it seems like it's a complex number. I might add to that too, if you don't mind. Uh it is a really unique situation. So public works and utilities are responsible maintenance of all 285 bridges we have in our system. Uh, and we have bridges that have aesthetic enhancements on them, but none of them like this. This Carthalite is very unique. Not something that we have staff that's trained to maintain. It's just not gonna happen. And that's why uh, we work with historic preservation planning department, but that still doesn't mean that there's ever historically been anything formal in place for doing this. Uh, we have put together a working group now start uh, communicating on more of a regular basis between departments within the city. One of the missing pieces of that is they don't necessarily have funding identified. So I know Janet had talked about we have restoration done in the next year, but I don't know that we still have funding even identified for that necessarily, depending on the level of restoration. One of the things that I think we probably need to look at with development of the next capital improvement program is consideration of putting this bridge back into the CIP as a separate project. Uh, I was heavily involved in the project in 2008, and it was surprising to me when we were talking about this last month that it dawned on me that it's been 14 years since we did that work. And so I think to, in my opinion, this is just mine, do this bridge right it's probably about time to consider a pretty major effort within the cip uh you know in 2008 we removed uh a lot of the superstructure a lot a lot of the the deck part if anybody was around and saw the holes in that bridge through the deck we kept the piers but we did some pretty major structural work to the bridge uh, so, and I think a lot of that's still in pretty good shape, so it may not be to that extent. But to be able to respond to the needs of the bridge, I think it's going to have to be a bigger effort. So anyway, with all having said all of that, we're working on it. We're going to try to find a way that we can potentially leverage capital to to make the needed improvements. Going to be chasing this. You know, uh, responding to graffiti and stuff, we're still going to have to work on that the same way that we are now. Uh, but there are some issues structurally with those cartholite improvements. So we'll keep pushing. Okay. 
Thank you. <clears throat> Just want to take an item number. More of an update for us. Motion on that. And for the design council members, we are to item five as may arise. Your lucky day. We've got several items going to update <laughs> that may arise. Yes, a handful of FYIs and things that actually see in an upcoming agenda. Uh, and being presumptive of where I think we might have some inquiries. Uh, we recently issued an RFI for the whole library, a request for information uh, for adaptive reuse of that space. Um, very early in the conversation of what we'll officially do with that space, but uh, there's a lot of interest specifically from the nonprofit sector on what that space could be. Uh, so it'd be presumptive that the use of that space would potentially come to design council if and when we know what's going to happen. So we just closed the RFI. We're um, uh, kind of organizing all of those comments that came in and all the formal proposals that came in um, that will potentially inform a future RFQ or RFP for what the next iteration is. Uh, that site is a historically preserved, so uh, the aesthetics are really important. The structure is really important to its future. So just as an FYI, that that project is moving, uh, it's moving a little slow, but we want to be very intentional with whatever happens to it. So just as an FYI. Um, another item of interest, uh, the Commerce and St. Francis Street design uh, that is on this current year's fiscal year, fiscal year uh, for Design Council is open. We have an open call right now. Um, close today. I believe we're going to help me out. They have received a shy of the a shy dozen of. And applicants so far. So uh, hopefully by the end of the day, we have a final a list of artists interested in that in that project. Um, next month you'll see uh, Douglas Street, Seneca and Meridian, the next iteration of design. If you watched uh, City Council or any of the dabs in, in recent uh, recent months, uh, that project is moving right along. So uh, we anticipated having Ken Williams, yeah, but he's pushed it back a month for the next iteration of design. I believe they're at the 75 percent design phase. Uh, so that project is moving right along. Um, I give Jana a couple bullet points here. Um, the other ma major one that you're probably going to be interested in is the East Kellogg project uh, going through Andover on 96. Uh, that project is moving right along. There is a public hearing on November 17th from 5 to 7 at Sunflower Elementary. That's their next public hearing. Um, I was the Raja. Uh, with KDOT to see if there are any updates, knowing that the design council wants to be updated and he didn't have any to report at this time. For the last meeting that you had in September, we did send a formal letter to KDOT encouraging um, aesthetics and design considered uh, so that received by KDOT, uh, but there's no update at this time. I have an update. Yes. Sorry, do you mind? Please. Uh, only because it impact the schedule, I think. Um, KDOT was moving forward uh, to hire a progressive design build team uh, to move everything forward at the same time from a timing perspective. They wanted to be done with the project by the end of 2025. So you hire a team that includes the designers and the builders. Uh, and you work through a progressive step of identifying pricing and everything that you're going to do. The process was completed. Uh, I sat in on all the interviews over the course of time. Election was made. Um, Effectively, uh, did not go through. Uh, there was concerns with the process. There was concerns with the selection on a lot of levels. KDOT has since canceled that procurement uh, as if it didn't happen. And right now they do not know what the next step is. And I only tell you that because it could impact the schedule without a doubt. Um, we're gonna keep a very close eye on that. Uh, they uh, need us to say what they like tomorrow. That's become, I'm sure, a bigger priority for everybody in Topeka at the moment. And that could certainly impact things going forward. I will tell you from our perspective, we keep a very close eye on things and try not to let this get pushed to the corner, to the back burner. Uh, a commitment for funding was previously made, uh, but I want to make sure this project uh, doesn't um, it's sold out too much. We, the city, 
staff oversaw the design of the last phase, the last two and a half miles. So if they happen to decide to look for a better way to deliver the project, I'm certainly going to look at offering that we could do that again, which would take this in a little bit different approach from a timing perspective and design, especially with the input that you could possibly have then with having different timing. I'm totally speculating. I have no idea if that's going to happen. I'm just letting you know what we're keeping an eye on because uh, I want to make sure it pushes forward. It might be. I would be surprised if they go back through the same process again, uh, just because some of the discussions after this one, I don't think they want to subject the project to that again. Anyway, I keep you posted. Make sure everybody gets the information as we come, uh, as it becomes available. They are having another open house, which is good. I was kind of surprised to see that. Yeah, let's continue to move forward. Uh, with what the environmental review process and the clearance process so the project will still be ready to go. Other than that, it's on hold. Just so you know. Well, I've got the question of why, and I'm assuming that ADOT just did not do the final contract team and uh, either going to invest or start over. No. No, it was uh, it was a political decision. There was considerable concern with the selection. Just telling you what I've seen and heard. And uh, there was a lot of influential people that got involved, including the governor's office, and that was the decision that was made was there was concern with the process. And so they just took the whole thing off. The table. It was not there was not a level of design even discussed such that that was a big part of it. I mean, that was part of the discussion and part of the interviews of, hey, here's some things we'll look at. But you know, there's only so many things you can do. We all know what this future freeway is going to look like. There's some things that can change for timing and schedule and all that. But nobody was going to bring this huge thing to the table that was going to, going to make a big difference. A few people showed some ideas that made no sense, uh, but it was more about the process. Thank you. Anything else on as may arise? Yes, so um, if I can give Janet a shout out, she's only been on the job two months, but has already done a great job kind of starting to make our public art collection, make sure we're cataloging it, maintaining it. Um, fortunately, the I think the week you started was also when uh, our art conservator, Deborah Rodriguez, was in town, so sat down with her. And I did a lot of one-on-one -on -one time of making sense of it. We assigned Deborah, uh, please do a, a detailed assessment of bridge but also a couple other items as well so as Jan is wrapping your head around the public art collection we'll be bringing more maintenance updates and kind of some general knowledge about the collection to this body as we accession or deaccession or do major overhauls and restoration uh, so we have a couple projects to know we do um so big red which is the work from the 1985 um that has been with russell marty conservation california Free being restored for siting at the Advanced Learning Library. Uh, that we are approaching the end of that restoration. Uh, Bob Marty is having the big, big red dipped uh, this week. Um, and then painting will, uh, final step of, of painting will take place and we hope to have it installed by the end of November, early December. Um, I did go and take a look at the pad that was recorded previously during whatever phase of the library that happened. And um, do that port as a tonnage rise in a generous effect uh, ratio uh, to protect the sculpture from uh, landscaping damage. And that should be done um, next month. Um, Unfortunately, we had some damage done, some vandalism done to uh, solar calendar in Central Riverside Park. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that piece. Steve Marillo did it. Uh, 
collaboration with Terry Corbett and Bernat. Um, and a number of the tiles were broken out of one of the one of the stones. Um, and one of the bronze boss reliefs was stolen. We are having that restored now, um, and hopefully, hopefully that'll be done by December sometime. But that is in process as well. So. Uh, and as an FYI, probably by the end of the year, we'll get the full report from Deborah. We should have it by mid-December. I'll definitely share that full comprehensive uh, multi-hundred page document with the group for some light reading. Uh, but that's is where I'm very excited to have Jana on board to have dedicated staff for our public art collection and to make sense of it all and to address your maintenance concerns. Having dedicated staff to kind of follow these projects along and keep tabs on them. Although I'll use more than one person, this is a great place to start. So we're really excited to have Jan on, on board to, to help make sense of them. Um, one of the other assignments that she's working on as we're doing a comprehensive review is making sure public access and knowledge is really a vital part of that. So as we're replacing plaques and signage at spaces, as we're acquiring new pieces and installation of Big Red is a good example. What kind of signage and plaque do we want to put there that's uh, the most inclusive and the most, most successful, especially knowing that it's at the Advanced Learning Center. We want to make sure that that plaque is uh, as possible, knowing that it's, it's kind of subset a little bit. So if you are in mobility challenges, how do you access that to even know what it is? If you're vision impaired, uh, how can you read or comprehend uh, a sign in that regards to? So Jane is tasked with a lot of things right now to really uh, make our collection most well maintained and the most accessible to the community as well. It's on. Any questions for Lindsay or Jana on as may arise? Not hearing any. I'm going to throw out a motion to adjourn. Second. Rondo. All those in favor say aye. <clears throat> Thank you all. <laughs>